Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Say, did you ever hear of a fearless clown? Well, just in case you haven't, that's the title of our Let George Do It adventure. Now, you're probably wondering what a clown has to fear in the first place, unless maybe it's a nasty elephant. And in the second place, how would you know when he's behind a couple of inches of grease paint? Well, all I know is that a very nervous girl is most concerned about a certain clown, and she's telling George Valentine all about it. Dear Mr. Valentine, I'm sure you've heard of Fofo, the fearless clown. Maybe you've already seen his circus before, but it's here in town, opening tonight with an all-new show. And if he's ever scared you with a snake or, or made you laugh with his crazy tumbling, and I'll bet, like everybody else, you must have thought he's a wonderful person. But I know that he's not. In fact, if Fofo should happen to die, I am the person who killed him. What I mean is, Mr. Valentine, I've already practically confessed to his murder. And it's your job to keep the most horrible man in the world alive. Sincerely, Relita. P.S. I'm the girl in the strawberry collared tights. Hey, there she is. Riding the lead elephant. How could you miss her? Oh, you spotted her before, this Relita? The tights, darling. Oh, or didn't you notice them? Foolish question. <laughs> Opening parade. She said we could catch her after the performance. That's a good idea. It'd take a stepladder to get down off that elephant any other way, wouldn't it? Brooksy, I'll tell you a secret. Hmm? You don't get down off an elephant. You get it off a duck. Oh, <laughs> George. <laughs> George! Oh, no, take it easy, Angel. That's the star of the piece, that's all. Both for himself. You know, he's about the only performer who's ever worked up to owning his own circus. Must be quite George, a George, he's got a snake. It came right out of his suitcase. Sure, sure. It's a good act to lead the parade but with. But look at it. George, it's a cobra. Oh. Take it easy. Take it easy. Putty nose and the clown rig is what makes it look so exciting. He's jumping rope with it. Brooksy, I'll tell you something. The fearless little man with his snakes. Hey, look, he's turning somersaults now in front of the elephant. But he's the man you're supposed to keep alive. Don't worry, I told you. For your information, there's not one snake in this circus that doesn't eat with false teeth. What? Yeah, sure. It just looks dangerous, that's all. That guy's not crazy. All his snakes are a fraud. Maybe he is too, I don't know. <laughs> well, I should have known, but... Hey, the elephant. Relita's elephant. <gasps> He's charging. But Fofo's turning somersaults right in front of him. Oh, George! Come on, get through the crowd. Shot of mine sure ended in a hurry. That elephant just went crazy. Fofo didn't even see him coming. You didn't even have a chance to keep him alive. Look, see, what I want to find out was in the first part of Relita's letter. Maybe it was the elephant who trampled him, but remember? She said, if Fofo should happen to die, I'm the person who killed him. Looks like poor old Fofo has gone bye-bye. And you know what? They'll probably blame it all on that nice elephant. We'll find out what's going on behind the scene in just a minute. But first, let's take time out for this. Now let's get back to George and Brooksy. Right now, they're backstage at the circus. George. Yeah, George. <laughs> Doctor says he's still alive. They got him into the ambulance as fast as possible. He's on his way to the hospital right now. Mr. Valentine, it was... It was an accident, wasn't it? Well? George, you saw it yourself. That elephant just went crazy or something, didn't you see? He charged straight ahead. If Fofo hadn't been so close sure, to Sure, sure, I saw it, all right. Relita, I think you'd better tell me about yourself in a hurry. Yes, of course. I. Well, it's, it's really quite simple. I, I'm new with the circus. I, uh, I do a little acrobatic dancing. I, I used to be with an act in nightclubs. Well, it's, it's rather hard to say this. I, I'm married, you see, and 
Oh, Mr. Valentine, Fofo's death was an accident. That's all it could have been. Relita, we do need to know your story, but maybe not all of it. Well, it, it's... Fofo is very attractive and charming. And, well, anyway, he saw me... He saw me act, and I, I met him. He wanted me to come with his circus. Now I have to stay with the circus. What do you mean? I think he must have enjoyed being in danger. I... I got mixed up with him. What do you think I okay, mean? Okay, okay. Emotional blackmail. Does that make it simpler for you? I wrote exactly why I was going to kill him and... Well, don't look like that. I didn't give him the letter or, or go out and buy a gun. In fact, I just tore it up. Or no, what I mean is I, I put it in my wastebasket. I, I'd worked on my steam, I guess. Anyway, I wrote everything to my husband instead and I mailed that and he understands. Well, why were you so frightened? Why did you want me? After the show that night, I came back to my dressing room and, and the note I wrote to Fofo was gone, disappeared. Somebody had taken it out of my wastebasket. Uh-huh. You wanted me to find out who and get the letter back, huh? Yes, whoever had that note could murder Fofo and use it to put the blame on you. And I don't know who that could be. I don't know the people around here yet, but Fofo's so popular, I can't imagine anyone else wanting to use that letter. I to... would kill him any day of the week. What? Otto. Uh, the show must go on. But somebody else can lead the band, eh? I wanted to find you, my child. Lolita, she will be all upset, I said to myself. Otto, what did you mean? You said you'd kill Fofo? Who are these people? Oh, uh, Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine, he's, he's sort of a detective. Well, naturally, I would expect that. Well, Lita was just telling us that she doesn't have many friends around the circus yet. So? She has me? And my brother, too. The boy, Freddy. Have you seen where he is, Lolita? No, I haven't, but... Oh, what did you mean Sure, when... come on, let's have it. Why would you kill Fofo? Everybody knows that. My foot. You see? I didn't always toodle on an oboe and wave batons in a striped coat. I was on the wire. Otto the Magnificent. <laughs> yeah. So one day I fell and was injured. But Fofo, you think he would help pay my two years of hospital bills, the way the law says? Then why did you come back to his circus? Why not? Perhaps to kill Fofo. I don't know. But neither does Fofo. That's what makes it interesting. Oh, Otto, stop it. You shouldn't say things like that. You are very mixed up, my child. And very innocent. Uh-huh. And you're trying to tell her that nobody likes Fofo, check? Light. Past tense. He was popular because he always liked to have around him the people who hated him. If this makes no sense, why try to understand that he's dead, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, practically. Killed by an elephant. Otto, is that true? If there were others besides me, then, then that letter I wrote is, isn't so important at all, is it, Mr. Valentine? Everybody hated him. Even my little brother, Freddy. The sweetest boy in the world. And a good entertainer, too, but out of a job. You think Fofo would give him work? No, no, Fofo laughs. He thinks it is funny I should have to support my brother. Skip it, Otto. What about the man who was with the elephant? What? The, the one walking alongside when it happened in there. Trainer, whatever he is. Mm, his name is Boxer. Well, I don't know. But he probably hates 442. Okay, thanks. You've covered up enough for a leader. What, George? Where are you going? Well, I'll start with the snakes, I guess. Down this way, I guess. You sure that snake is locked up tight in that box? Was Susie here? <laughs> Don't you worry about her, mister. Not a fang in the circus, didn't you know that? Harmless is a ten-foot piece of garden hose or a, a goddess snake. Yeah, well, never mind showing me. Just keep the lid shut, huh, will you? Sure, all right. <laughs> Some people don't like snakes, I guess. Me, I kept him in my bathtub at home ever since I was a kid. And he Hold hide him. That him over there? Yeah, yeah, there he is. Got them all chained up separate. Well, that's the sheriff's work. Poor old Emir. You know, that elephant's been with us almost five oh, years. It? Oh, hello, Boxer. Me is all it's on. I'm George Valentine. Oh, uh, yeah. Sheriff sent word. Snooping, huh? No, not exactly. Boy, look at the chains they got on him. No, what's the matter, baby? They got you... All right, all right. Show them the snakes. That's what you come down here for, ain't sure, it? Sure, sure, Boxer. Take it easy. All right, there we go, Susie. Don't eat up all his hay now. 
Wait a minute now. Better not let that snake get so close to his trunk, had you? Look, Mr. Valentine, the Amy here wouldn't care if a snake crawled up his trunk. Okay, okay. Hey, look, get her out of here, will you? That's good, thanks. You're welcome. All right, Susie, off we go. Back to bed, that's a bed. So it wasn't the snake, huh? Come here, Mr. Valentine. Ah, oh, don't be afraid. The ammo won't step on you. All right, oh, boy. Give me your rear, boy. Ah, that's it. Here, look. What's that? Bunch of brands? Same idea, only you mark the ear. See? Double X, that's one circus. Triangle, that's another. Crossed lances, little crown. That, that's for digging trees up for some Maharaja. Yeah, a whole string of them. In other words, the Amy has been through the wars, huh? He's older than you or I or anybody else around here. Been everywhere and done everything. And Mr. Valentine never once has he caused a bit of trouble. A freight train couldn't make him nervous or jumpy. Then what did? I don't know. Suppose somebody put a lighted cigarette to his ear. Well... Suppose that stick you carry just happened to poke him at the right time. There was only me and the girl on top near him. Nobody did nothing like that. Well, if he's such a peaceful elephant, then how do you explain his actions? Maybe you don't explain it. Animals are funny, Mr. Valentine. Sure, sure, I know. An elephant never forgets. So maybe he didn't like Fofo either, huh? Don't be ridiculous. All right, then what happened? Something sent the Amir off. George. Yeah, Brooksy, out here. I'm just trying Come to... Come here, quick. Huh? Here. Over here, George. Well, what's happened? You here from the hospital? Yes, but... Here he is. Yes. Well, this is Mr. Valentine. Now that's right. Who are you? George, it's Fofo. Yes, of course it's me. <laughs> a quick recovery, wasn't it? I think I have nine lives. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Fofo! What happened? What are you doing here? Now, hello, Otto. Relita? Well, don't all stand there as though I were a ghost or something. I've been down to the hospital. I was in town. I heard on the radio what happened. George, he died. The sheriff just called. Wait. Wait. I don't understand. Oh, I get it. Somebody else was doing your act for you. All that clown makeup and costume, yes, somebody... Yes, yes. Ah, but Arthur, I'm so terribly sorry. Only you yourself kept asking me to give Freddy a chance. Freddy! <gasps> Otto. <coughs> Poor fellow. He loved his younger brother a great deal, and he wanted him to work so badly. It's really his fault, I suppose, that Freddy is dead, no? Huh? Well, it couldn't be anyone else's fault, could it? We'll return to our adventure with George Valentine in just a moment. Now, back to George Valentine. Fofo, the fearless clown, seems to be a man with nine lives because it never occurred to you or the other thousand people who saw an elephant suddenly run berserk and trample him that the man under all that makeup wasn't Fofo. No, it was really a boy named Freddy who only wanted a job with Fofo's circus. Well, now Freddy is dead. And if your name is George Valentine, you go down to the hospital to make sure of your facts this time. Of course it was Freddy. Who else would it be? He spoke to them, the doctor said. Did you hear what that doctor with the glasses said? Freddy uh, didn't say anything, Otto. He couldn't help any. No. No. How could a poor boy know who killed oh, him? Oh, Otto, Otto, snap out of it, will you please? I know how much you loved your brother. But what's done is done. Yes, yes. Besides, what do you mean, know who killed him? Did I say that? Well, why not? Fofo killed him. How do you figure that? Look, closing time. All around us people going home. But for the circus, time off, that's all. Two hours between afternoon and night performances. Freddy liked the night performance best. Look, Otto, I asked you why Fofo would kill your brother. 
I don't know. You mean because Fofo so gratuitously took this afternoon off? So accidentally put your brother in his place? It was a new performance. Yeah, yeah, that's what the big man told Miss Brooks. New lights, new costumes, new music, the works. Fofo wanted to drag some publicity men from downtown, to watch with him from out front for a change. That's what he told Miss Brooks. You think it's a lie? Everything he does is a lie. Okay, prove it. I... I can't. And Mr. Valentine, you will waste your time forever if you try to. You can't always win, so... All right, wait a minute. Come on, hop in. I'll drive you back to the grounds. No, no, it is closing time for me to... Where are you going? I will walk back through the park, I think. Go, I'll see you later. I'm not young enough to just walk out on a job. All I mean is for me, it is over. I will stop trying to say Fofo is evil. I will let you waste your time. This is dressing room? In the railroad car, George. It's the drawing room. Oh, yeah. Nice way to live. Sure he's gone? It's through the office part, they said. Oh, yeah. Here we are. Keep out. Private. Do not disturb. <laughs> nice, friendly sort of guy. George, wait. Well, Mr. Valentine, you're snooping, huh? Perhaps you came to steal something, huh? Yeah, maybe I did, Fofo. A letter. Uh huh. A letter? <laughs> Let me see. You represent Relita, don't you? So, I guess I might as well start looking, huh? Where is it? The desk? You know, I like you. You are very shrewd. Now, look, Buster, she wrote a letter. It explained what kind of a guy you are. And why she would like to kill me. So the letter disappears. Somebody stole it. It doesn't take much shrewdness to figure you're the boy who took it. Relita's very young. She needed to be taught a lesson. She's already learned it. Stay away from clowns. But I suppose you got a lot of fun out of scaring her to death. Now, here. You may have it. It has served its purpose. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Fofo, you enjoy things like this, don't you? <laughs> what this guy Otto says about you is true. I think we can skip the psychoanalysis, yeah? Otto's stupid. He would never be able to do anything about the way he feels. I might. Sit down, Valentine. You know, you advertise for danger. You're the kind of man I've always wanted to meet. Oh, no thanks, Buster. My job's finished. What? Yeah, the reason I was hired, at least. So now the coast's clear to solve a murder, isn't it? And right now, I'd rather hear what Boxer has to say. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Here, hold the flashlight a minute. Well, maybe Fofo let it slip, but he mentioned you were claiming the Amir wasn't to blame today. I know, I know. And earlier I said I couldn't see how anybody could have made the Amir do it. I still don't. But you say one of the men heard someone out here. That's right, Miss Brooks. Two nights ago. Roustabout says the Amir was snorting around. Sure. Of course, I told Fofo. But you think he'd be interested if it was murder? You think he'd do anything but laugh over it? All right, skip it, Boxer. Just what happened two nights ago? Well, this Roustabout was waked up by the Amir. Came over to see what was the matter. Sure, there was a man here. But he disappeared before he could get a look. Didn't report it. Didn't think it was important until today. George, look. Mm. It's a sliver. A thin little sliver of wood. Wow. Uh huh. Looks like a chip from the sawdust. Let's see what it looks no, like. No, wait a minute. Look out. It's broken already. Polished white wood. That's not sawdust. Well, maybe it's sharp. But that's nothing you're going to hurt an elephant with either. Here, I'll show you how tough the Amos skin is. Don't poke him. If you think that was what was riling him up, when you got another thing oh, coming. Hold it, now you listen to me. Boxer, what would happen if you took the elephant here back into the main tent? The way he was when he tore loose this afternoon when the accident happened. I don't get you. Could you guarantee to the sheriff to have enough chains or enough men to keep him under control? I sure are. All right, the tent's empty now. It's between shows. Everybody's available. Yeah. George, what do you want to do? A little reconstruction, Brooksy. It just occurred to me that the only one who can solve this crime in a hurry is the Aimer himself. You all set, Otto? You want everything the same. All right, all right. Start your silliness. Old Saul puts himself. Where have you been? <laughs> I'm back, aren't I? I guess, Mr. Valentine, I've been thinking about what Fofo should think about. How you can't always win. 
But you will never teach him. What do you mean? All right, let's get this parade going. Come on, you know the sour pussy plays bad music anyway. Why aren't you ready to walk through this thing, Fofo? Haven't even brought your snake box in yet. Haven't even started a somersault. No, I will do my part. Don't worry, I'm not afraid. Oh, skip it. It's because you know I don't need to go through with it, isn't it? Is it? Sure. It's because you know I've already got the answer. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, on the way back from the hospital, I stopped to pick up a book on elephants. Take the aimer here. He's been through the wars, hasn't he? No, that, that band is making so much noise. Oh, you're with me, all right. But here, look. The brand marks on the aimer's ear. Boxer, give me the stick there. Well, don't you want me to lead him around like I did? No, I take him. I can handle him. Well, give it to me, I said. Well, sure, boss. Never mind, never mind. Here, take a look. Three X's. That's a circus. A crown. Boxer says he must have pulled up trees for a Maharaja once. Cross lances. Well, in India, that was the best job an elephant could get, wasn't it? Only goes to the biggest and finest. Battle elephant. You are the expert, not me. I suppose the lances might mean that. What are you driving at? The aimer's memory. Something way back in his training. Something he'd do on the right command automatically, fast as lightning. Practically a reflex action. Yeah, well, go on. What's up, Valentine? Oh, let's get this over with, Sheriff. I don't like it. Otto, stop that music. Hey, Otto, stop it. What's the matter? Okay, now. Play the same tune you played this afternoon. What? But I have told you, everything is the same Opening as Opening performance was... of the new show was this afternoon. Sure, that's right. Everything was new, even costumes and music. So play that same march. Sure, I told you it was different, Otto. Yes, go on, Otto. You write the music, play it. Mr. Valentine wants everything the same. Unless you are afraid to. Be quiet, will you? Otto, your instrument, I remember, is an oboe, a reed instrument. Well, is this white sliver of wood yours? It's a broken reed. What? Somebody dropped it the other night, doing something that made the aimer get all excited. Playing softly in his ear, maybe. Testing a composition, maybe. I, I, I don't understand at all. I... Yes, you do. You're wasting time. Come on, boys, you don't need a leader. Play out the same arrangement you did this afternoon. Wait! Let her go! Here we are, Valentine. The Emir and I. What's the matter, Otto? The Emir here is really harmless. But if a man were turning somersaults in front of him and suddenly some horn started blaring out... Wait! No, Mr. Valentine. Wait, boys! I don't know the notes, but something deep in the elephant's memory, maybe. Battle elephant. And I suppose there must be a call for charge. At least that's what they use battle elephants for. Stop it! Stop that music! Stop it! Stop it! All right. I am the one you want. Imagine trying to kill me? <laughs> He's tried it before, but that's what his scheme was. Oh, he had good enough reason, I guess. No, but the irony of it, Mr. Valentine, he worked up such a beautiful way to kill me. I always told him he was never smart, no. <laughs> and then his plan backfired so tragically. No wonder he fainted when I told him his brother had taken my place. Uh-huh. Well, I just talked to Otto back there. He won't say anything. But how can he? Because he can't really prove that you'd caught on to what his plan was, that you had his brother take your place on purpose. <laughs> well, and uh, can you prove it? No, of course not. So why talk about it then, huh? Yeah, that's right. Why talk about it? George, let's get out of here. Oh, leave me alone for a minute, will you, Angel? Don't you see? Fofo's right. I can't prove it. We will return to our adventure with George Valentine in just a moment. have to be shot now. That's one good thing come out of it. Oh, sure, sure, Boxer. And you can go right on having trouble with your boss, and Relita can still be practically blackmailed by the guy who's still got his eye on Oh, George, stop beating yourself. There's nothing you can do about it. You said so yourself. Yeah, sure. In fact, Otto told me that earlier, before he stumbled off to walk in the park. Said I'd waste my time forever if I tried to get back at Fofo. 
You can't always win, he said. Yeah, poor Otto wasn't bright enough to get rid of Fofo. And I came along, so he never got another chance at him. Uh, maybe I don't mean that. I don't know. Well, on with the show. Sure. Listen to them in there. In a couple of minutes, the fearless fraud will come galloping in with his little suitcase, opening the parade. And the people will scream and clap their hands for him and the snake with false teeth and his somersaults in front of the Amir. So we don't like the way it ends, Brooksy. Hey, there's a police car come back to meet us, I guess. Come on, let's go. Only... What's the matter? Otto said a couple of funny things. And it was odd his not being willing to talk about anything after he confessed. What? In fact, it was funny he didn't confess earlier. The shock of finding he'd been responsible for killing his brother and all. What are you talking about? That policeman getting out of the car as a funny cab. Made me remember Otto's wanting to go to the park, that's all, then hey, showing up later. Mr. Valentine, this guy's from the park. Yeah, so I noticed. City Park Zoo. We need help fast. Along about closing time, somebody broke into the snake house at the zoo. And buddy, our snakes aren't amateurs. Our biggest cobra is missing. You have just heard The Fearless Clown, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story, and the music was by Eddie Dunstetter. Now, this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. <laughs>